your relationships. Those are the most important things that you're gonna do. But your website is what we call part of an integrated media campaign that is multimedia. Your Dottie says you're gonna do the print, you're gonna do the PR, you're gonna do the face-to-face -face meetings, you're gonna do fundraising, you're gonna do all of that. Your website should just be a support to those activities. But it has to be integrated with your other branding components. Your images, your typography, your colors, the quality of your visuals all have to work together. Okay, so who is who do you think is going to go to your website? Or who do you think is going to go to your website? Um, supporters initially, friends initially, um, beyond, you know, beyond the initial stage of Right. Because yeah, they want to find out more about you than yeah, a short conversation or talking to you. Okay, great. Your opponents? Your opponents? Yes, yes. You've got to think that your opponents are going to go there. Maya, who else is going to go? Well, I was going to say opponents, but I was going to say the press. The press. Okay, those are the big three. This is a really smart group. You've already figured out that out. Those are the big three. The opponents, your opponents, your press, your supporters. Your friends are already going to know everything about you. I doubt if they're ever going to get to the small type on your website. They already know, love, and trust you. Here's, here's some money. Here's a check. Okay. But the others are really important. And so it's you, you want to have a website that's done with best practices. What do I mean by best practices? I mean pay attention to those messages. And um, you guys are all ready for smaller offices, right? Nobody's running for a regional office, so we don't even need to talk about bigger, bigger type field campaigns and websites for that. You guys need to keep it simple. Like Dottie says, keep it simple. Less is more. Have a front page. Your front page is going to talk to the most important issues in its first person should be written pretty much kind of in the first person or present itself somewhat that way. It should have a very personal feel. This is who I am, this is why I'm running. If you're running for re-election, this is why I'm running for re-election. But why are you running, okay? Very brief on copy. The, when you open up your laptop and you see the screen, we call that area in design parlance above the fold. Design your home page so that everything that is important and essential on your website is above the fold. No scrolling, please. You could scroll a little deeper if you have a longer letter, but please, not too long, okay? At a minimum, you have that statement, and they have a nice little navigation there. You have a page where they can read more deeply about you that includes your biography, you have another web page or another uh, screen view that shows your issues, where you are on the issues. It can be done in the form of a question and answer. You want another section that says how to contact you. Put your phone number in there. It's got to be a phone number that you call. You have got to appear sensitive and connected, because you're already locally, right? You, you, want, you want those touch points. You want to encourage those calls every chance you get. We even tell our people on a robocall that if there's <coughs> enough time, if there are enough seconds left in that robocall, put your phone number there. That's, that's a demonstration of being well-intentioned, okay? You want an endorsements page, right? And then uh, we're gonna give you your, your donor page too. And you might also want a volunteer page and an endorsement page, okay? Or you could put all three of those on, on one page and you're gonna call it donate, volunteer, or endorse. Make sense? We're not, is, this isn't rocket science, it's little stuff, okay? But that's what you want at a minimum. We call that in the design world architecture. That's the way the architecture that your site should have as a minimum. You can also add a news section if you like. Okay? You can have a news section like you make the news, you can put that in. Okay? It doesn't have to have a lot of bells and whistles. 
It doesn't have to have a lot of um, photo galleries or video stuff. It doesn't have to have a lot of impossible WordPress plugins. How many have you ever heard of the words WordPress? Okay, good, that's good. So a lot of sites are being done with WordPress templates now. You can do that or you can not do that. The WordPress template is really good for a blogging format and it has a lot of pre-made plugins and widgets that add functionalities to it. But less is more, people. Put your Facebook in there and your Twitter link in there and a contact link and an email, all that stuff. But don't put the kitchen sink in there. Keep it simple, make the information easy to find. Most important thing in terms of the text on your website is to be honest first. Honesty is the best policy, okay? Don't lie on your resume. I worked on a campaign um, uh, against uh, Melvin Belli's wife, Leah Belli, who was running for, for mayor. And we caught her because she lied on her resume, okay? And we did the print. This is before the days of web, but we did the print all on this, and it killed her because she lied. And it was not just a little pork. It was a big one. It was, it was really kind of big. So you don't want to go there. Okay? Uh, so honesty is the best policy. And then what else do you think you need to do? Anybody? You guys are smart. What else do you need to do with your text? Check your spelling. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're on, if you think back, you know, when you're doing any kind of communication, and I teach communications at Dominican, I always tell my students, think about your most critical segment of your total audience. It might be the press and your competition, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Do you want them to catch you on bad spelling or grammar or usage? And this is where a good political consultant can come in and help too, as they really help you refine your messages. And the higher editors, the higher professional editors. Okay, so you want you want to be you want to really own that content. You want it to be you, and you want it to be the best reflection. Jody gave you yes. Oh, there's a question. Especially for school board. Yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> word. Yes. Yes, especially. Yes, especially. And um, watch your watch your styles. We we like to use um, AP style, mm -hmm. but um, you may want to use Chicago style if you're running for school board in terms of your editing. Serial commas are okay in Chicago style. So Dottie also mentioned and the importance of typography in your print campaign and using headlines, big, big headlines, not, and breaking up your copy with subheads and using bullets. The same is true on a website, except don't have a lot of stuff, a lot of copy on your pages. You know, don't have a lot of long scrolling pages. Um, but you can throw that white paper in there as a PDF and people can download it and print it if they want. All that stuff is possible. Um, probably, is anyone here gonna have a budget to do any kind of TV or video or anything like that or podcast? Anybody? No, it's, it's yeah, so don't worry about that. Yes? So can you address website budget? I know there's a lot of low cost and well, let me ask you guys a couple questions. Okay, if I'm the kind of person that says content is king, and then I turn around and I say garbage in, garbage out. Have you ever heard that expression? Garbage in, garbage out. Okay, so here's a, here's a little question for you. Do you think you should have your cousin's nephew, <laughs> who kind of knows something about design, but didn't go to the art academy or any other reputable design school doing your website. No. 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 You, you want to get people who've, who know how to do the work, okay, and they know how to make the, the balancing, careful balancing decisions that are made in creating any kind of a professional communications product. They know how to design for impact. They have a strong sense of branding. Their typography is clear and concise. And now we come to what I think is one of the most important things, 
Your website is just another aspect of your integrative marketing campaign, and it is your branding. It is your branding. You want it to look the best. I like photography that looks great. I don't like the stuff that's shot with backlit, out of focus, somebody's in blurry motion, it came off of some Facebook page, or you've got a funny expression, or you're, you're, it's just not pulled together. Use a good photographer. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but just use it somebody who has, has, has the equipment and knows how to use it. Okay? Yeah. I was just going to say, also someone who's responsive. Yes. Because, you know, you get new endorsers, you get, um, you know, whatever it is, a new article. If whoever is managing your website is taking their dear sweet time, getting it on there is not going to be as value to you. Well, yes and no, because think about your audience. If you're a President Obama and you've got all these troops to rally and the web website is the single point of contact for most stuff and you've got this huge field campaign, maybe. But if it's your press or somebody and they're not going to go back all that often, if you're not making the news all that often, if you're not, if you don't have a blog with updates that's, that's giving people feeds or email notices about your latest news, it may not be so important. But if you do a website and you have a blog component to it, or you want to run an email campaign, an email blast campaign, that's something you can add and integrate into your website too. But I would not think it's, it's quite as important. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So get your, get your quality images together. Okay. Don't have the same picture of you on every page necessarily. Change the view. Okay. Uh, isn't it nice to go into a room? The difference is like going down a, um, a, a hall in an elementary school. Somebody's running for school board. You look in every room and they kind of all look the same, basically, the furniture, right? But isn't it exciting when you go down the hall and every classroom looks different, okay? You got the same kind of architecture going through it. You got the same theme and the same branding going through it. But you gotta, you gotta liven it up with fresh photography. Okay? Ladies, when you get your portrait taken, get a couple taken, okay? And wear something bright, okay? The rule in political stuff is wear something bright, okay? You want to be seen. Uh, where's Barbara? She had that great jacket on today. Barbara gets an A plus, okay? You do too. <laughs> okay, these, uh, you don't have to look like a neon sign. But, but wear something bright, it'll make your face kind of, you know, pull together. Uh, guys, haircuts, haircuts, very important. Grooming is, is important. And, you know, uh, wear, you know, wear a couple different outfits in your, in your shots. And get pictures of yourself interacting with people, the kinds of people that you want to represent, the kind of people that you want to reach. I like to see diversity. I like to see the visuals on a website talk about not only the issues, but the diversity of your audience and, and the people you want to reach as voters. So if you've got a sizable uh, senior proportion and you think they're going to vote your way, you better picture, have some pictures with seniors. If, they're, if you're in, an, uh, in, in, take a picture in the environment, if environmental considerations are part of where you're at. You know, and which in Marin, if you're all running in Marin, this is ground zero for the environmental sustainability movement, right? Mm -hmm. So you do that. Uh, families, you know, if you got if you if you go around and you do a photo shoot uh, in a single day and you go to a bunch of different locations, change your clothes in each <coughs> location and interact with different kinds of people and have a good photographer recording it. Okay. Yeah. Try to avoid a lot of indoor shots, because unless the photographer's really good and can balance the lighting, it's gonna look poor. Don't have people follow you around to events necessarily and shoot pictures of you unless they can control the lighting, okay, and capture it. Okay, you, you want to look effective. Okay, so let's see, what have I not covered here? 
Um, let's see. I think I've covered just about everything, unless there are some questions. So I'd like to leave you guys with those. Yes. Do you think there should be a donation link? And does that mean that you have to sign up for the credit card company? Well, I would say PayPal is your best option if you're a small race because ActBlue doesn't do um, these local races. They only do the bigger races. Yes. Uh, no, let me tell you because I ran last time and I ran this time. You can do a PayPal account, and the way I did my link is if they don't have a PayPal account, they can immediately pay with a MasterCard, Visa, Amex. Yes. So yes. it's no problem. Yes, they can and, do And then what I also did yes. on my site is, or please send a check, and I listed my treasurer. Right. With her address. Right. Yes, and you, you, you repeat that. I would have your, um, in the footer, I would have your contact information and where to send checks always in the footer on every page, and your phone number. Phone number, email, full address, mailing address. Name of your treasurer, the FPPC number, et cetera. Any other questions on websites? How much, oh, somebody asked how much you should spend. I think in your smaller races. Like what? With photography, I mean, a, a really good photographer working at a discounted day rate, maybe shooting for half a day, maybe you can get through with $400, usually $700 with a photographer. And then, um, you know, setting up your uh, domain name and getting your hosting account, maybe another 125 And then, um, you know, your consultant work is kind of going to take it anywhere between $2,500 to $5,000, depending on what kind of a site you want. Okay, but that would get you through your writing, your editing, your photography, your design, your, your loading. And you can shave maybe, you know, you can shave money off of that if, if you pick a boilerplate WordPress theme and work with somebody to really utilize that theme in the best way possible. Make sense? Okay. But um, we, um, we at Green Dog uh, work with people's budgets. You know, we find, find creative ways to do it. Okay, so don't be scared. And the other thing, do not count on your website. This is probably the most important thing, and this kind of balances into what Annie was talking about. Don't use your website to drive, uh, use your other material to drive people to your website to pay. Let them know they can pay online if they want. But I want you all to have a remit envelope. Do you all know what a remit envelope is? It's, it's a donor envelope. Yes, Greg has one right there. He will give it to you if you give him something in it. <laughs> Since he's running for uh, election. Uh, so you're going to drive people to your website. but And you're going to collect money on it. But you're not going to sit, sit on your hands and assume that the money is going to come pouring in. Okay. When you when you fundraise, you have to develop the art of the ask. It is so so hard to do at first for some people. Some people just get out there and ask, but it's very hard for others. I have a very hard time asking for something for myself. Very hard time asking for money for myself. Um, even though I've been in business for. A years. It's, it's just it's just difficult okay but you got to do it okay you got to and once once you start doing it it'll 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 come easy but you got to ask and ask often and ask early we should have had you role play as an expert <laughs> at asking for money uh, hardly expert but, uh, yeah and the, and the, and if you've got a whole bunch of endorsements Greg has a lot of them um, he should, he's, I'm sure he's asked all of them for money, too. Okay? So your website's going to support all your other activities. Okay? And that's another reason why if you work with a consultant who's going to take you through the branding process and your brand is going to be integrated with your print and all your other materials, your website should look like it's right in line, don't you think? Okay, good. It's been great to work with you guys tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, next, Jason Walsh from the Pacific Sun is going to talk to us, or talk to you, about how to get that coveted press endorsement. Thank you, Jason. Thank you.
<clears throat> Put my nose down here. I'm depressed. We always have to um, I'm Jason Walsh. Uh, I'm the editor of the Pacific Sun. Um, we've been uh, handing out in political endorsements for Marin elections since the Kennedy administration. And um, while the styles and processes have changed in various ways from decade to decade, uh, we've always tried to reflect the values and pro of, of our progressive readership in Marin County and um, reflect its concerns about education and the arts and the underprivileged and the stewardship of our environment with a watchful eye toward common sense and more importantly, a common uh, sense of human decency. Uh, our goal is to persuade the readers. And by that, we mean uh, to swing votes. Uh, we want to make a difference. We want to be the difference. The Sun is known for its political endorsements, uh, we like to think. Um, uh, many readers simply snip out our little yearly election cheat sheets and take them directly to the polls, or they uh, fill in their absentee ballots directly from those. And we, uh, we want them to keep doing that. Um, for the past few years, um, for a long time, we issued our endorsements uh, a little bit piecemeal. As the election approached, we'd do um, the city councils one week, and we'd do the countywide measures the next week, so on and so forth. But um, uh, more recently, we uh, issued a single endorsements issue um, with the whole kit and caboodle and uh, a, sing on a single cover feature uh, a few weeks before each election. And the goal for that is for maximum impact. We want people to have one single place to go for, for our endorsements, and uh, we try to present them in a visual way that's just fun and not typical endorsements type visuals. Here's a particular favorite of mine for the movie fans out there. Patton with the Pacific Sun uh, logo on his head. Um, the races we endorse uh, tend to be uh, the countywide issues or the townwide issues. Um, board of Supervisors, townwide, townwide measures, or uh, countywide measures. Um, we try to hit all city and town council races, and uh, some of the larger districts that encompass all or most of the counties, such as the Marin Municipal Water, Water District, or College Marin, uh, Marin Community College District, Marin Healthcare District is a big one coming up. Who's behind the endorsements? Um, officially, the Pacific Sun Editorial Department makes the editorial endorsements, but uh, that really means a handful of folks, and it obviously changes from year to year as the Pacific Sun changes. Um, I'm the editor, so I'm highly involved in that. We've had various publishers over the years that are either very active in it or prefer to be more hands-off. Um, we have various writers and correspondents who cover certain towns and certain issues quite well, and we, we rely heavily on their input, and we reg regularly seek outside input from other community members whose judgment we respect and uh, it, as long as they're not directly involved in a particular political campaign that season. For the past several election cycles, I've written our endorsements physically. Written. We, uh, most newspapers and media outlets these days rely on two methods of uh, getting feedback from the candidates. Um, the candidate questionnaires, which some of you have probably already received from some other, we're a bit tardy in ours this year, but they're becoming, so be, be ready. Uh, candidate questionnaires, uh, candidate in-person interviews we also do. We're a small staff, so uh, we tend to save the in-person interviews for smaller elections when there's not, when there's not a dozen candidates running for a certain um, council. Um, uh, if, if it's a bit, if it's a bit of a smaller race, we uh, we tend to have more of a grasp on getting people into the office uh, for in-person interviews. Also, if we if we just interviewed you for the last time you ran, um, and we feel we know you pretty well, we don't necessarily think we need to have you come in physically again. Um, but answering the uh, answering the endorsement questionnaires is uh, uh, a big deal, and uh, we take our questions very seriously. And so here's a few tips. Um, on uh, how new candidates and seasoned veterans should handle uh, the endorsement process. The first one of our top 10 list is to have a top 10 list. <laughs> or more precisely, have a handful of initiatives or agenda items that are nearest and dearest to your heart. This is your platform. 
the positive changes you think you can get done in your town or in your district, at the very least, don't have 10. Don't have 10. Uh, hone in on about three. Uh, 10 was a convenient segue for me right there at the moment. Um, the media, for some reason, really likes the number three. Uh, candidate interviews and newspaper endorsement forums often ask, tell me your top three ideas for Fairfax. Give us the three things you'll do in your first day in office. Uh, the Rick Perry rule is to memorize what they are <laughs> and remember them. <laughs> There's a reason for this. Uh, we're journalists, and uh, we've learned to clearly define what sort of information we want from you. If we didn't, our interviews could either go on forever or end so quickly nothing is ever answered. So a seasoned question ask, asker will often just say, um, tell me one thing you would do to support, to, to support the fight to save climate change, or not to save climate change, uh, or name the county's three most pressing transportation issues. We want, we want, we want to define it and, and get a number out of you. Answer questions, answer the questions that we ask you. Uh, we'll occasionally get candidates who declare that they're not seeking donations or endorsements, um, ostensibly not to be indebted to anyone uh, w once they uh, take office or uh, take their council seat. This sounds noble and maybe it's well-intentioned, but what the press hears is, I'm not versed enough in the issues to go on the record and answer your questions. Or worse, we hear, my ideas are too crazy to be seen in print. <laughs> Declining to take part sends the wrong message. The community has a right to know you and your positions on issues that will affect them, and answering the direct questions from the media is the best way to get that information to them. It's part of the job. Uh, don't be a one candidate. Don't be a one issue candidate. Sometimes uh, people will tell us that they're running because they had a bad experience with town bureaucracy and they want to fix City Hall. Um, or they, they're out to unseat an incumbent because the incumbent voted for a parcel tax that they didn't like. Uh, we don't doubt that passion or deny their frustration, but it's not all about you. It's a tough sell. It's a tough sell asking voters asking voters to vote for you because the side yard setback ordinance prevented you from remodeling your dream kitchen. <laughs> uh, send or bring us a resume and any campaign materials you may have. Don't overwhelm us. We get a lot of mail anyway. Um, know more about, know more than we do about what's happening in your town or district. Don't declare your candidacy for District 1 supervisor and be surprised that there's a little issue about affordable housing going on. <laughs> Have something substantial to say, even if it's really a sneaky way of saying, I'm on the fence. Next, uh, don't be on the fence. <laughs> Take a side on issues, even if it's more like craning your neck, sort of lean. We want to know your position, even if it's not hard and unshakable. You're allowed to change your mind. Our only requirement is that you have one. A mind or an opinion? A mind. Uh, know the newspaper or the media outlet who you're responding to. Even if you're not a regular reader or of a publication, get to know it before we approach you. Knowing the attitude, style, and personality of our readership um, and of the prospective endorser is an obvious advantage. Plus, it makes us feel loved. <laughs> And finally, if you don't receive an endorsement from a publication, take it with a grain of salt. Many factors go into an endorsement. The issues of the day, uh, who they're running against, the past experiences of the, of the publication. Um, we do this long enough, we run into the same candidates sometimes uh, from year to year. Sometimes we've endorsed them, sometimes we haven't endorsed them. Um, they haven't suddenly become an ideal candidate in a single year, or ha they haven't suddenly lost their marbles either. Besides, comfort, your felt, com comfort yourself in the fact that sometimes we just get it wrong. Uh, convince, us, convince us we did, and try to earn our endorsement the next time. Uh, that's my little spiel about the endorsement process, but I like to open it up for questions, too. Yes? I take it that you're new to the newspaper business. Yes. Do you I'd say that's true. If one is an int interested in the environment, they sh would also endorse sanitation <laughs> district candidates because we're where the rubber meets the road. So 
if you're not endorse, endorsing sanitary districts, I'm appalled. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, do we endorse sanitary districts? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do. In our yeah. Let me, uh, I'll address some of the smaller community <laughs> districts. Um, if, if they have to be making some headlines, um, I think that's that's if they haven't been making some headlines, which means we've been following them. Uh, the Nevada sanitary, sanitary District, that we, we did endorsements in as well. We will what about endorse. Las Galinas Valley Sanitary District? <laughs> We've got actually competition in our election. I know, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. <laughs> a, lot of times, a lot of times, these little districts don't always have uh, competition. Yeah. But I, to be honest, it would because we don't have the uh, staff to follow them as closely as perhaps uh, <laughs> residents of the Las Galinas, got Las Galinas Sanitary District. Or board members. Or board members. <laughs> it, it would arguably be irresponsible for us to weigh in. Because we throw a lot of votes towards certain, certain directions. And if we haven't been paying attention uh, until two weeks before an election, I'm not so sure that's a responsible uh, newspaper. We'll pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Make some headlines. Oh, you got headlines. Yes. I'm sure a lot of these questions are centering on ones that you may or may not endorse, but do you typically endorse some of the school board elections, like the Canfield School District Board? We haven't endorsed in uh, school board elections, but again, it tends to be ones that we have followed very closely. Yeah. Have you followed Nevada? I live in Nevada, and I have kids in Nevada. Okay. Yes. So, follow up. So my name is Maria Adler, and I'm running for school board in Novato. Give me your top three priorities for the Novato School District. Children, children, children. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> it is one. That, that would, the press would say that's one. So it would be children. It would be the, um, the education of the children's safety and the um, being financially uh, responsible and financially um, accountable. That's very good. So, so <laughs> you like talked about endorsing. You're talking to them. <laughs> but uh, uh, contact me at the sun. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. What's your email address? My email address is jwalsh, J-W-A-L-S-H, at pacificsun.com. Yes? Uh, quick question. Have you decided which races you'll be doing endorsements in for this upcoming election? We'll do... All the city councils will do all the uh, local community measures. Um, that's just off the top of my head. College board usually. We'll do the college board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the short answer is um, we haven't. Okay, thank you. Yes. I'm uh, that's it because I'm out of your <laughs> out of your publication range. But do you dig? Um, I've uh, witnessed some other endorsements from other papers where it seems like the endorsement that they chose, they sort of took it, took information straight out of their campaign literature, or maybe it's from their questionnaire. Do you guys do any further background looking into into your candidates before you endorse? Oh yeah, we, we use Google extensively. <laughs> <laughs> we don't necessarily go. Yeah. Somebody had mentioned earlier that the press goes to the websites a lot. Yeah. We, speaking from personal experience, I will go there to um, double check on things that I already think are the case, perhaps have been responded to us in a certain way. I'm trying to sort of verify that that's sort of where they're standing, um, or just to spell names correctly, things like that. I think we get them right. But <laughs> assuming you guys get them right. But it, it's difficult to go to a website, and um, again, websites in the press's eye are um, you're putting your best foot forward, and you're very well prepared, and you've had. Uh, days and weeks to think about what's going to be on that website. Um, where we, we prefer to go by your, uh, your responses that maybe you wrote back to us on questionnaire. Granted, you might have had a couple days to think about those, but still it's the question we got to pose to you as opposed to you presenting an answer to a generalization to us on your website. Yes? Well, the Pacific Sun has been so good at traditionally at having in-depth articles on certain issues, sometimes even better than the larger papers in the area. So I, I'm wondering, I'm assuming you talked to the reporters that covered that covered that area in that investigative piece. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. 
Any other questions before I hand it over to Mary? Thank you. Cemetery District Board is going to talk about her experience as a candidate. <laughs> Thank you. Can I get this to go around here? Yeah. All right. I'm going to try to kind of bring it home <laughs> and get everybody home. And I will say that I was at a similar one of these, I think about three or four years ago, in a little tiny room at Kings, mm -hmm. and Jason was doing that. So uh, he's done it a lot of times, and this is my first time. And then I just want to ask, how many people in this room, first time candidates, are freaking out right now? Because <laughs> I am, and I've run, and I've done it. <laughs> and the amount of information you guys are just given, and the amount of things you need to do, and how you need to do them, is, you know, would freak me out. And I will tell you, I think one thing to remember is that you're running because you're a person, and you're a different person from the other people who are running, and to be really true to that, and true to yourself. And the campaign consultants are fantastic, and they tell you what to do, and then filter it through who you are and what you think you should do. And that on some of the points, and I'm gonna to get to them at the end notes that I've taken during the session, I'll tell you, I didn't do that, or I did it, and I don't think you need to do that. Um, but I'm gonna start with sort of a general, my entry into politics, and uh, local politics. I don't know if I wanna call it officially politics. So I think you probably all, the people who are thinking about running, have like a moment where you're like, I could do that, and I think I should. Well, I can trace my moment back to not actually deciding to run, but getting involved with the Ross Valley Sanitary District. And it was on December 31st, 2005, <laughs> when I woke up at 6.45 a.m. in my house, and if you remember, we had about 18 days of consecutive rain, and later on, San Anselmo Avenue ran like a river for the second time in my memory, because I grew up around here. Um, and I heard a like fire hose sound. And my bedroom is on the second floor of the house. We have a family room downstairs. And as I went down the stairs at 6.45 a.m., it's pitch black. And I heard the sound that I thought, it must be like the downspout got tilted into the window. And what am I hearing? And I stepped into it. And I was stepping into what I later found out was 4,000 gallons of sewage that was spewing out of the downstairs toilet. And it turns out that we have the lowest toilet in the neighborhood. And the pump station for the Ross Valley Sanitary District at the end of Stadium Way ran out of power. We didn't have any power. And the backup generator didn't kick on. So my entry into politics was stepping into 4,000 gallons of sewage. Now, there are some ways that I would say that stepping into local politics actually is like stepping into 4,000 gallons worth of sewage. Uh, you can't possibly know what you are getting into. The decision you make, kind of like parenting too, you make a decision and a few years later you say like, I don't know, if I'd known all of this, would I have done it? You can't possibly know what you're getting into. Uh, in the process, you meet a lot of people who are gonna be really nice to you and support you and then some of them are gonna say, I feel so sorry for you and I can't believe this happened to you. <laughs> stepping into sewage, stepping into local politics. <laughs> Finally, once you do it, you might not want to ever do it again. <laughs> On the other hand, there are a lot of ways like stepping, that stepping into local politics is not like stepping into 4,000 gallons of sewage. It's a conscious decision you make. And you make it because you decided you wanted to make a difference, you wanted to change something, and you think you have the skills and abilities to do it. And that is true. I mean, for anybody who decides to do this, it's a statement that you believe in our democracy, uh, and that you trust the process, and that you trust the people. So the only broad thing that I would tell all of you, um, if you don't know it already, is that the skills for running and winning an office are very, very different from the skills needed to serve as an elected official. Running for the office is a sprint. It is physically exhausting. I'm pretty healthy. There were days when my legs ached from walking up and down the hills of the Ross Valley where I had to knock on doors and waving signs at the hub in San Anselmo. My legs ached and my arms ached. And every day my campaign consultants, God bless them, kept saying, do more, do more, do more. You need to be knocking on 1,400 doors. Do more, Mary, make more calls, we need more money. You can physically exhaust yourself. So again, it's an important time to remember you are an individual who decides how much of this you are going to do. 
And that's an important statement to the community about who you are. Serving in office is like sitting in a meeting for, in my case, six and a half hours the very first one. We met at 6 p.m. and we got out of there at 12.30. Yeah. It's about dealing with budgets, yeah. bond measures, Jail politics bonds. among five people <laughs> instead of politics among 29,000 in the Ross Valley Sanitary District. <coughs> uh, so it's a completely different skill. So recognize you might like and be good at one of them, but you're gonna have to do both. A little like childbirth and parenting, you know, going <laughs> through childbirth and labor. But if you wanna do it long term, you're gonna have to do the campaigns again and again and again. I come from the nonprofit world where I was a fundraiser and a do-gooder. So I knew that. I knew that you have to like fundraise, schmooze, talk to the people with the money, and then you gotta sit down and do all the details of getting the work done. So I think I was pretty well suited to it, but I'm not sure everybody who gets involved with this knows that. And you may find that you like one or the other better. And realize, for local politics, campaign is like six months. My term is four years. I mean, some people are saying to me, what's next, Mary? And I'm like, well, what's next? The next three years of my term. And then probably I'll run again for this very same office. So there's a pacing to it. You're going to sprint towards something that then is going to put you into some a place where you need to chill. Um, based on what I've heard tonight, the other comments I would make is that, you know, it's funny about Facebook and websites. I mean, I was like, yes, yes, have to do this, have to do this. And when I was running, Tom McInerney was the social media candidate. I texted him yesterday, can I donate to you online? And he said, oh, no, I don't have a, I don't have a website. So I wonder. He's I in wonder, a post. Yeah. What's that? He's at a post. <laughs> oh, okay. And I actually just learned that tonight. So thank you. He's asking me for money and he's on a post. Um, <laughs> Right, so that, that makes a difference. But I wonder, like you put these things up and then actually I think the worst problem is that they may age and you don't go back to them again. I mean, the, the campaign consultants, God love them, mine, <laughs> will tell you everything is important. And at a certain point you'll feel like, oh my God, everything is important, I have to do everything? Well, we don't know what makes somebody vote for somebody, we really know. So they're gonna tell you, do everything. And then if you don't do everything and you lose, I'll be like, well, you should have done that. <laughs> or you can, you just spend yourself out. Um, I was telling some folks here earlier tonight, I had never had strep throat in my life during my campaign, during my IJ endorsement interview. <laughs> it turns out I had strep throat. I didn't find out the next day because I just had a searing sore throat for four days, but I'd never had strep throat before. I took the antibiotics, it came back because that's how depleted my system was from the campaign. You know, would I do it again? Yes, it is, it is like pregnancy and it is like childbirth. I do it again, but it is very hard. Mm -hmm. I heard tonight you need to have an indiv individual treasurer and volunteer coordinator. I did it all. I'm one of those people who's like, I can delegate it and worry about it, or I can do it. So if you are that kind of person, you can do it all. It is filling out forms, it is keeping track of who's giving you what money, and if you're a little bit of a control freak and you're not having that many donations coming in from that many different people, I would say you can do it yourself. Yard signs, I did them in my neighborhood. I have some Kentfield people here. People know my name. People come by and see my garage open and they see those signs and they're like, oh, that's you. So I don't know that I would say no yard signs. I think you need to look at how big your district is, what you're running for. In the Ross Valley Sanitary District, we have Fairfax, who votes? And then we have Sam and Selwyn who votes pretty well. And then you get down to Kenfield, Larkspur, Greenbrae, and they're like, what, what? What is the Ross Valley Sanitary District? So if you think that you have an area that's going to vote that doesn't typically turn out or doesn't know who the candidates are, and that's where you live, put up your signs because I became the Kentfield candidate. Um, yeah, I think I've, oh, and then, and then the remit envelopes. That's kind of old school. I did that because I was advised to do that, but I got a lot more donations online than the remit envelopes. Just don't buy hundreds. You know, there are, there are people in this room, remit envelopes, Greg, are their thing. That was not where I got a ton of donations from. Got them at house parties. You know, my sister-in-law, my parents had a house party. I talked to people who, a weird combination of people who've never thought about a sanitary district, didn't know who dealt with what happened when they flushed their toilets, and then like the rabid politicos who were just hiding. 
and a lot of people left there writing the checks. Did I need an envelope for that? No. So, I mean, you want to cover all your bases, but just, just be careful about the advice you're taking, you take. So the bottom line, I would say, is you know, be true to yourself. Because if you follow a whole lot of crazy advice and drive yourself crazy, or a lot of advice that seems crazy to you and drive yourself crazy, and you don't win, you're going to kick yourself. But if you're true to yourself, then at least you'll come out feeling like you, know, you ran for who you were and you got your result. Questions? Uh, what did you use as a handout uh, when you were meeting me, whatever? Yeah, there was like a, a, a slick color thing. Yes, the, the not the mail piece, what would you call it? The oh, door oh, knock piece? Walk the, card. The walk yeah. card, thank yep. you. It's been a year and I've already blamed it. It was about this thing. They were bright colored, um, yes. And in terms of photographs, my brother. My, I mean, my brother has a fancy digital camera. And I said, come in my backyard and take some pictures of them. He went to USC Cinema School, so he knows he has an eye. <laughs> Find a friend who is an amateur photographer. Um, it, 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 I, I, I can't imagine paying a photographer. Apologies to the professional photographers in the room. Anything else? What was your budget? Oh, uh, <laughs> you should ask Scott. He was always saying, what's our budget? And I'm like, yeah, I think I ended up spending a little over $20,000 on my campaign. Um, sure. And contrary to what you know, somebody has asserted on Facebook, it was mostly me and my mother. <laughs> uh, so you know, that's, that's where local politics starts, with your friends and your family Absolutely. who believe in supporting you. And I do agree with this. I mean, when somebody endorses you, it's one thing. If they're willing to put down a little cash, much more invested, and then they will tell their friends. And actually, when you think about the house parties or even emails that you send around with the intent of getting support and endorsements, realize those things are forwarded. And so if you can get it to somebody who never thought about who they were gonna vote for for sanitary district, and they send it to five friends, you know, when those people walk into the into the ballot booth and they hadn't even thought about it, they're like, oh yeah, I got that email from so-and-so that, you know, this was who I should vote for. It's an incredibly cheap way to make a difference. Yes? Did you run against an incumbent? Yes, I ran against, well, there were three of us up for two seats and there were two incumbents. So Frank Egger and I won uh, for the two seats. And could I just ask you, what was your, your message when you were trying to unseat mm. somebody else? Well, you must not follow the Ross Valley Sanitary District because it was, it was a pretty easy message. It was, um, I wanted to change the leadership and management of the district. And the general manager, who was the general manager at the time, is in the county jail right now. Oh, I um, did follow that. Oh, that's my district. Yes. Out. So it was just to change the management and leadership of the district. And Frank has done a fantastic job of leading the board over the past year. And and we have turned around. Um, and with Frank being the president for the last year and our new interim general manager, Greg Norby, who is an engineer you know, from the finest uh, consulting firm in the world on sanitary districts, we're, we're in a really good, good place. See, that's, that's so unfair, though, because in San Antonio, nobody's in jail. So it's not a <laughs> <laughs> But I will tell you, when I was running, I thought job one. Oh, yeah. I thought job one was to try to get rid of Brett Richards, and I didn't know how that was going to happen. So imagine, I sat through my very first open session, and then we went into closed session, and they told us Brett Richards resigned today. And I, you know, like, I was like, could anybody have told me that before? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He blogged, he blogged from Florida for yes, a he did. while. Yes, he did. There will never be as dramatic a story as that. Yes. I, I got that one. <laughs> Yes. You've done a good job. When She's you had, job. what, three candidates for two offices, you're saying, mm -hmm. um, how did you ensure the fact that the person that you, since you, since you didn't do a slate, I assume, mm -hmm. so, so how did you discreetly or politely or whatever get out that message of who you wanted to eliminate? The issue, um, well, the issues were pretty clear. And that the division, the way um, the woman who was the current president of the, of the board when I was running, Marsha Johnson, wanted to lead the district was directly opposite to the way I wanted to lead the Did district. Did you name that person? Yes. In some of my mailers, yes. Um, 
Even the Wall Street Journal that mentioned Ross Valley Sanitary District for being crazy, so that was, that was a fun <laughs> snippet for a mailer. <laughs> Anything else? I don't want to just talk about the Ross Valley Sanitary District. I think regarding the budget, it's for those people who are running in small races, it's, it's important to look at scale. Ross Valley Sanitary District has a lot of households, a lot of voters. That's going to be a lot of expense, so you've got a bigger budget for that. But you guys who are running in, in, in smaller towns, it's, it's going to be Quite a bit less, so don't get scared. Keep going. <laughs> okay, keep but going. Martin's we need great. you. You obviously <laughs> care about it, so keep going. But thank you, and I think this has been a wonderful opportunity. I really want more people to run for office. You know, new, fresh faces, and more women. And I just think it, you know, it can only make things better. So I thank you for your attention. Very much, Mary. Well, that concludes our presentation. I really want to thank all the presenters tonight. Um, if anybody just just has any kind of suggestions for anything, any of the candidates, uh, anything that they would have liked covered uh, that they didn't think would be covered, um, or maybe you can talk to us afterwards. But anyway, I know it's getting late, so thank you very much, and good night, thank you. and good luck. <laughs>